What if the universe doesn't want us to leave? If you fired a revolver bullet toward Alpha Centauri right now, it would take over 3 million years to arrive. Our fastest spacecraft, the Parker Solar Probe, travels about 430 times faster than that bullet, yet it would still need over 6,000 years to reach our nearest stellar neighbor. But speed is not even our biggest problem. At near light speed, the laws of physics themselves turn against you. This is why interstellar travel is not just difficult, it is a cosmic death trap designed by the universe itself. Einstein's relativity offers the ultimate cosmic tease, unlimited travel at an impossible price. At CERN's Large Hadron Collider, protons race around a 27-kilometer ring at nearly the speed of light. From their perspective, that distance contracts to just about 4 meters. Space itself shrinks by a factor of 7,000. This means you could theoretically travel to the center of our galaxy, 26,000 light-years away, and experience the journey as lasting only 37 years. The entire galaxy becomes crossable from your perspective. But here's what happens when you return. While you experience 37 years, 26,000 years pass on Earth. You step out of your ship to find a completely transformed world. Everyone you knew is gone. Your entire generation, all part of history now. Civilization has advanced beyond anything you could recognize. New technologies, new societies, perhaps even new ways of thinking have emerged. You return as a stranger to your own species. Time does not flow at the same rate for all observers. The faster you travel, the more slowly time passes for you. As you approach the speed of light, your own time almost stops, while time on Earth keeps flowing normally. You can go anywhere in the universe, but you can never come home. But even if you could accept being cut off from your time, the universe has built an even more brutal trap. The LHC uses enormous energy to accelerate protons with almost no mass. Accelerating just one kilogram to 10% of the speed of light requires energy equal to over one million tons of TNT. At 90% light speed, the energy requirements multiply by over 250 times. As you approach light speed, the required energy soars toward infinity. The universe has built a wall that gets infinitely higher the faster you want to go. Suppose we somehow solved the energy problem. The universe has prepared something even deadlier. At near light speed, Empty space turns into a machine gun of invisible bullets. Every speck of dust becomes a bomb. NASA's interstellar dust experiment aboard the IMAP mission has been studying particles traveling at just 100,000 miles per hour. Even at such relatively low speeds, impacts create plasma temperatures over 10,000 degrees Celsius, hotter than the surface of the sun. Now imagine traveling at 10% of light speed. A grain of sand would strike your ship with the force of hundreds of kilograms of TNT. To protect against such impacts, a ship would need armor heavier than the spacecraft itself. But heavier ships need more energy to accelerate. More energy means bigger engines. Bigger engines mean more mass. You're trapped in an engineering paradox where every solution creates a bigger problem. The same physics that makes distance contraction possible also makes the journey deadly. The universe gives with one hand and takes with the other. We continue to push the boundaries of propulsion. In 2025, we are closer than ever to fusion technology. Princeton's proposed direct fusion drive uses deuterium and helium-3 heated to over 100 million degrees. Simulations suggest it could reach Saturn in about two years, yet even this revolutionary concept would still take over 40,000 years to reach Alpha Centauri. NASA's Project Orion in the 1960s proposed something truly extreme, propelling spacecraft with nuclear explosions literally riding atomic blasts through space. Even this bold concept would take over a century to reach our nearest stellar neighbor. The speeds needed for Einstein's effects remain far beyond our current reach. This leaves us with only one option, and it's terrifying. The only way to send humans to the stars would turn the journey into a floating prison lasting centuries. But what happens to the people inside changes everything we understand about human exploration. Even if we build massive generation ships that cruise at significant fractions of light speed, their crews become something new, something that's no longer quite the same as what left Earth. The first generation volunteers knowing they will never see their destination, they will live their entire lives in a metal tube, watching Earth shrink to a point of light, then disappear entirely. Every subsequent generation is born in transit, citizens of nowhere, belonging neither to the world they left nor the world they seek. At 1% of light speed, a journey to Alpha Centauri would span over four centuries, approximately 15 to 20 generations of humans born, raised, and died, all between the stars. But the real cost is what space does to them. 
Cosmic radiation slowly rewrites their DNA. Low gravity reshapes their bones and organs. Isolation warps their psychology and social structures. Even with the best protection, the humans who arrive at their destination might be fundamentally different, biologically and psychologically, from those who left Earth. This brings us back to Einstein's revelation. Einstein's relativity is the ultimate cosmic joke. The same physics that makes interstellar travel theoretically possible, distance contraction and time dilation also makes it practically impossible. Perhaps the universe is not forbidding us from leaving, only asking if we're ready to pay the price.